Hello everyone, Chris here, and today we're going to do a comparison, side by side, between Wonderlist and Todoist. Now, I'm sure there's a good chance if you're a subscriber you've seen my Wonderlist introductory video. And Wonderlist is essentially um, just a task tracker um, for any tasks that may be personal or work related. You can go ahead and create them, set deadlines, and uh, even have reminders that can go to your email and categorize these different tasks into lists, such as you can have one for work, you can have one for whatever you want. Maybe you're making a camping trip and you have to uh, pack certain things. That could be one example of a list you can do. And then over here on Todoist, you have a very similar set of features. They are direct competitors with each other. As you can see, I have some tasks over here and a few of them have actually been made in a hierarchical fashion. So this thumbnail tutorial task actually has two subtasks below it and you can see that you can set different date and time requirements for each task including the subtasks so while it doesn't make sense really right here the overall task in this case is set to be due on september 15th today and the subtasks are set to be due tomorrow that's something i'll probably want to fix in fact I can go ahead and click here and we can change that right now. So one thing I do like better about Todoist than I do Wonderlist is their date choosing feature. When you click on your date for any task that you've added, it gives you this pop-up. Now it's just a simple calendar, but at the top you have the most frequently used options. So today, as in the tasks is due today, tomorrow, next week, and one month or to have no due date. And of course, if you don't want those, you can choose between these, but usually I would just set something for due tomorrow because I'm thinking about, hey, what do I need to do for the next day? So having this available here where I can just click this and go click tomorrow, that's very, very fast. And it's one of the things that's a little bit better over Wonderlist. So if we go ahead and create a task in Wonderlist, I'll show you their interface. So um, let's just make something random here. If you click on the task after adding it in, then you get the ability to set a reminder time and a due date. But the due date selector is probably not as good. You have to basically choose the month, the day, and that's fine, but it feels a little bit slower um, because you don't have those options to just click once and have it set to today or click once and have it set to tomorrow. Well, the set to today would just be to leave it on its defaults, but to actually set it to tomorrow anyway, you would have to drop it down to the next day. And that's just a little bit of a minor detail. Um, you can have it repeat as many times as you want, repeat every day, repeat every week. But honestly, I kind of found for tasks like that, it just, and maybe this is more of a personal thing, but it doesn't really feel spectacular to have an email come in that says, oh, you have to do this task you do every day. Like you wouldn't put brush your teeth on the list. Maybe it's more useful for weeks or that sort of thing. The recurring task feature isn't actually specific to Wonderlist. You can also do it within Todoist. However, it's a little bit less intuitive. If you want it to actually repeat, you have to basically type it in as far as I could tell. So for instance, if you want it to repeat every day, you instead of selecting the date here, what you would do is type in every day in the text box. And if you actually check their website, which there's a link to, um, right by the calendar selector, you can hit recurring dates and more and that opens this up. You can see basically the format that each kind of recurring schedule would have. So if you want it to be every second Monday, you would just type in every second Monday. The only problem I see here is that if recurring tasks are something you really want to use, that this text-based approach is going to have a little bit of a learning curve. Because when you're talking about complicated recurring dates, like every workday starting Monday and ending the, at the 10th of June, that's a little complicated. It might take a couple tries to actually get it to go properly. Both Wonderlist and Todoist have the ability to create lists. And just like in the web interface of Wonderlist, you would click down here in the bottom left to add a new list. It's really stand out and obvious. And you would go ahead and give it a name. So it could be anything you want. Let's just say camping stuff. And you'll see below one of the features that are so great about these kinds of tools, especially Wonderlist, is that you can add other people by email to this list so that they can also be notified about what's going on with any of the lists you've created, any of the projects you're working on, and the ability to have them come in and edit your list as well as long as you give them permission to do so. 
If you wanted to do this functionality inside of Todoist, what you would do is instead of adding a list, you add what's called a project. I think project might be a little bit of a specific word to use, considering that people may want to use it for other purposes, but it's essentially the same idea. So we go ahead and add a project and here, let's say tutorial videos, hit add project. And now it's going to immediately take us in this other pane to the tutorial videos project where we can add tasks that are specific to this project. So make a video maybe, or for instance, um, update channel. I'm just kind of making stuff up here. You might suspect that with this project, we can actually share it with other people as well. And it does it in a very similar way to Wonderlist as well. So if you click on this three dots over here to expand this drop down menu, you can hit share project. And from there, you add in people's emails and bring them into the project in the same way, allowing them to be notified about the changes that are occurring in your projects and the ability to add and manipulate tasks within that project. So you can see that these two pieces of software are remarkably similar in how they work and what they have in terms of feature sets. But let's talk about one thing that Todoist does that Wonderlist don't. Uh, up here, you'll see the Karma option, and you'd also see this in other versions of the program. Keep in mind that Wonderlist and Todoist don't just have a web interface, they also come with Windows 10 apps, and you can also get apps for your mobile phones, and I believe that applies to Apple and Android as well. So pretty much whatever you're using, you have the ability to use these programs. So up here, you have Karma points. And as you complete tasks inside of Todoist, it will keep track of basically how you're doing. Are you completing your objectives on time? Did you start to slack off? Have you let something that was supposed to be done 20 days ago go unanswered? You never completed it or you never marked it as complete. The Karma Points system doesn't really do anything, but it does kind of encourage you to maybe be a little bit more productive if looking at a point total and a graph is something that assists you. Uh, Rescue Time kind of has something similar to that where it will tell you what percentage of your time was spent on productive things. Uh, but this is a different app. The Karma system of Todoist doesn't actually do anything, it's just to notify you how you're doing in general. So as you fail to complete items, it's going to take points away, and as you complete items or add more tasks, keep track of what you're doing, uh, it's going to add in more points. Let's point out one more thing that Todoist does a little bit differently. You might notice in a wonder list task that, at least in the regular version, you don't really have the ability to set priorities for these tasks. Yes, you can create subtasks, but each task is pretty much the same visually speaking. But in Todoist, you can actually increase a task priority. For instance, let's say that this thumbnail tutorial is something we really need to get done. So we click over here to bring down the drop down and set its priority. Of course, priority four is going to be lowest, but we could increase it to priority three, priority two, or priority one. You can actually have the priorities mean whatever you want, but I believe that's generally how it's intended. Priority one is the highest. So just with that little visual indicator, you can take a look at your list, see exactly what you need to get done and which need to be prioritized over the other tasks. And that will become more useful if you have a lot of different tasks on your to-do list. Now here's where the free version of Wonderlist really dominates over Todoist. If you want to set reminders, you can do that within the free version of Wonderlist. It's very simple. You just click on a task, set a reminder here in the same way you set a due date, hit OK, and it will send you an email when that comes up. If you want to set a reminder in Todoist, you technically can, but the thing is, it's a premium feature, so you don't have access to email reminders or mobile notifications unless you actually pay for the premium version. Another feature that Wonderlist has over the free version of Todoist is the ability to actually include file attachments. So if you wanted to include anything on your Wonderlist, you would just have to hit down here the attachment icon indicated by a paperclip, which is pretty universal across all applications. Find your PDF or your image, whatever you want to include, and upload it straight to that task. It's important to note, though, that with the free version of Wonderlist, the file size maximum of those file attachments is not unlimited. Now, speaking of the premium version of Todoist and also Wonderlist, they both have premium versions. The Todoist one is going to cost you $29 per year, which comes out to about $2.5 a month. The Wonderlist version, actually is going to cost you $50 per year or $5 per month if you buy for the entire year 
I think that comes out to something around 4.1, 4.2 dollars. I'd have to take out a calculator. Uh, 50 divided by 12. You do the math. Some of the notable features of the Todoist Premium are going to include notes and file attachments. File attachments being pretty important, especially if you're going to share your projects with other team members. Mobile and email reminders. Once again, I want to point out, Wonderless allows you to do this for free. Automatic backups, which if you don't want to lose data, usually a good thing to have. And the ability to incorporate your emails as tasks within the Todoist system without necessarily having to manually add everything. The premium version of Wonderlist is primarily about removing the restrictions that Wonderlist Original had. So the free version of Wonderlist allows you to upload files, but only up to 5 megabytes. With Wonderlist Pro, that restriction is lifted. With the free version of Wonderlist, you can only assign 25 to-dos per shared list, which is really a heavy restriction if you want to work as a team within Wonderlist. So if you actually needed to work with the team, you'd probably want to go ahead and upgrade to the Pro version. And with the Pro version of Wonderlist, you are able to break any task into as many different subtasks as you want. However, honestly, I can't imagine there being that many tasks where you really need more than 25 subtasks. So when we're talking about Wonderlist Pro, I'm thinking more of the business side of things. If you are using Wonderlist as an internal company tool, that have multiple people working on a single project, then the pro version of Wonderlist is probably something you'd want to look at. When we go back and take a look at the premium version of Todoist, I see a lot of extra features that are nice to have, but really only benefit people who really like to sort and organize their to-do lists. Probably not necessary for most people. However, not being able to have file attachments and email reminders in the default version of Todoist is kind of a major drawback because those are really quite critical things to have. However, that said, the premium version of Todoist is cheaper than the premium version of Wonderlist. So when it comes to comparing Wonderlist to Todoist as which kind of app you want to use, do you actually want to have this Karma tool where you can see your productivity? And do you want to be able to set the next date for the task to tomorrow as easy as it's done in Todoist, where you literally just click tomorrow and it's done? That's something I really like about Todoist. Or do you really want those features that are only available in the premium version of Todoist and Wonderlist? Because in Wonderlist, you can set reminders and you can set file attachments very easily. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Wonderlist versus Todoist with me. They're both pretty solid programs. Either way you go, it's not going to hurt you or set you back too bad because they are both fully functional as a to-do list. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.